Welcome to Paxa Rubiana here in front of the Austrian um, War Ministry. Of course, it's no longer that one. It was only until 1918 uh, the Austrian War Museum, the Imperial War Museum of the Austrian Hungarian Empire. But it's today, it's the Ministry of Economy, Labor, and many other of the important ministries. They are based here, and it's a symbol for the Austrian colonialism in the Balkans for our wrong war policy for our anti-Americanism, because here Austria waged war against America. In 1917 we were enemies and it's time to make peace again. Austria and um, this beautiful uh, lead nation of NATO, America should be friends and should be united in NATO. Of course, the anti-Americanism um, has uh, the deep-seating roots in Austria, anti-Semitism, anti-capitalism and all this anti-American uh, movement uh, which is materializing in our hatred against TTIP and against NATO. You see the long-standing tradition of Austria having uh, lost the war against America and America basically gave, making the decision on the division of um, the end of the Austrian Empire because until 1918 uh, basically they were still in favor of keeping the Austrian Empire together but then uh, they made the decision basically on the pressure of uh, support of the Czechoslovakia and also others they were no longer ready and so the hatred uh, from uh, against America probably is connected to that defeat <laughs> I'm not sure because there are so many reasons for this uh, strong hatred of Austria against America, maybe also this arrogance of a former colonial empire which is then defeated by America and then uh, divided in its small um, constituent parts. It's many theories I have about that one, but it's unfortunately a fact and we have to overcome it. I think here is the most significant place we could call now today for NATO membership and also for TTIP, by the way, we should also have a free trade agreement and we should overcome the anti-Semitic and anti-capitalist and anti-American roots and this protectionist uh, ideology on which Austria is run still today. I'm very sorry for this. Uh, it's now 2022 and uh, we still um, have uh, a government opposing Mercosur agreement with America, with South America which is still officially against the free trade agreement with uh, the United States of America. We have at least ratified uh, CETA with Canada. That's a big step. Uh, Germany has not managed to do that. And so there is a lot of uh, things uh, which we need to overcome. And I'm calling for that and I think that will be very significant. And of course uh, joining NATO will be very relevant uh, step uh, for Austria to confront the ghosts of the past but also to be ready for a better future. And Austrians are quite normal Europeans, um, I think so. We are not so different than Germans, Italians, Slovaks, Hungarians, Croatians. Yeah. We are a bit a mix of all of them to my best knowledge. You know, there is a very dynamic mix now in Vienna especially but also in Linz and in most of the uh, areas um, you have this European mix today and we always had it because uh, Vienna was also the capital of that uh, cap uh, empire of more than 50 million people 100 years ago and they were coming from all these NATO members back then and now they are united in NATO but only Austria is missing and of course Kosovo and of course Bosnia. I make this triple uh, accession campaign I understand Serbia is not ready, Moldova is neutral I've criticized them already and um, I understand that Ukraine is at war and it's difficult for them to join NATO at the moment while I think the way for peace is NATO membership because a strong alliance is a deterrent. It's the same thing like nuclear because Austria signed also the nuclear treaty, the ban of nuclear. I'm also in theory, it is all nice. Yeah? But in the real world, you need a strong deterrence nuclear and you need a strong defense alliance. Yeah? Because otherwise uh, the bad guys win and Russia would impose its will on Europe completely by force. Yeah? And they have done it after World War II 
and they were ready after <laughs> then as well the whole time to do that. But NATO was defending as well Austria, even when we are not a member. But I think that's the way to do it. We should join. I understand that many of the people also in uh, the Austrian defense establishment because they have different opinions, um, partly because many of them are on the Russian payroll, but also many of them, they have this idea of a strong neutrality, armed neutrality. I just don't see the armed neutrality because we don't invest in our defense. And also I don't see against whom we should um, be against the other EU members or what. <laughs> against Switzerland. No, the idea of one defense union is to be strong uh, together in all of Europe united. And that's the idea of the European Union, to my best of my knowledge. And when we have a Trump presidency again, because that's a big argument, it would be also much better that we are much more united in Europe as well, because we could also carry a bigger defense burden, also a nuclear defense burden inside the European Union, inside NATO because it will be ultimately also the EU joining NATO because Malta, Cyprus and Ireland and Austria will not alone change uh, the direction of ever deeper integration of the EU in NATO and then we will be all united and I think it's very good and Austria can then return to EFTA and then um, that would be basically the end of our membership in the European Union That would be very sad, <laughs> but I'm very much uh, in favor of us joining NATO and the, uh, staying in the EU, which is the logical, I think, uh, conclusion of our Western integration. Yeah, that's the logic of my people's petition. I have now found already 100 people signing. That's in the first week. I'm very happy with the result. It will be on for many weeks and then we will have uh, many more um, uh, signatories Of course, I understand it's only 16% of the Austrian population in favor of NATO. But, you know, also in Finland it was the same. The war will most likely go for many years. And over time also the Austrians will understand the value of solidarity, which the left is always preaching and the Christians are always preaching. So solidarity is meant between the poor and the rich, but not between uh, the Central Europeans and Austria. <laughs> So they should defend us, like Ukraine physically, but also the rest of Central Europe, like Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, they should defend us from the danger, and we don't care and we don't pay. <laughs> and we don't even let them at our labor markets. Yeah? So that's the idea of the Austrian solidarity. The left for me is totally discredited in uh, ideological terms, and uh, they are serving Russia but also the Austrian People's Party has moved in that direction and that's very regrettable and I'm really very sorry for that. So I hope for the Greens and the Liberals uh, to join this movement and I hope uh, that it will be a big mass movement towards NATO membership of Austria in the coming weeks and years because it's the only logical direction of us being fully part of the Western world, of the free world, and overcoming this tragic legacy of the Austrian anti-Semitism and anti-capitalism, anti-Americanism, which is ideolo and the protectionism, which is all the same ideological kind of socialist, nationalist uh, root cause, and we have to overcome it, I think, and to be a normal country, that would be the direction. Thanks a lot, and please sign the Austrian People's Petition And let's make sure that Austria, Kosovo and Bosnia, the Balkan enlargement will be next uh, towards the European Union. And that's what I'm calling for. And thanks a lot for your support. Thank you. Bye.